Helicopters have lent helping hands down through the years. Those rescued or aided have had excellent reasons for literally regarding them as hovering angels. When conditions prevent conventional means of swift salvation in normal circumstances, the helicopter's versatility is outstanding. Aircraft carrier pilots call an escorting helicopter the angel. The shock of disaster is cruel and demanding. Action must be immediate. The injured must be helped, the abandoned saved. Time is tied to method, and both are usually essential. The anguish of parents when a child is imperiled and the loved one far away is poignant. The feeling of helplessness is like a heart stab. A newsreel sequence of such a situation brought national attention not long ago. Deep snows in January of 1966 marooned 61 Boy Scouts and 14 adult leaders at a winter scouting camp at Rising Sun, Maryland. The scout troop was trapped after a severe storm, cut off from supplies, unreachable by plows or snow tractors. Food was low. Several of the youngsters were ill and in need of medical attention. Boeing Vertal in Morton, Pennsylvania, received an urgent call for help from Boy Scout District Headquarters. Permission to send a Chinook was given by the Bureau of Naval Weapons. Boeing Vertal Division personnel manned the aircraft. The flight from Philadelphia to Horseshoe Bend Boy Scout Camp in Maryland took some 30 minutes, arriving about noon on January 31. The landing was tricky and accomplished amid high winds in a narrow area among thick woods. With the exuberance of youth, the scouts clambered aboard the Chinook, curious and delighted with an unexpected experience. Scouts of Troop 43, Westchester, Pennsylvania, found it hard to contain their excitement. The boys, 11 to 14 years old, found the whole thing a grand lark. In the roomy Chinook, the lads burst with curiosity, asked a barrage of eager questions about the aircraft. Most of the youths were unaware of the seriousness of the situation. Their camp out had been cut short, but the ride home in a helicopter more than made up for disappointment. The scouts were carried in relays and disembarked on Westchester High School's football field. Grateful parents awaited their arrival. Halfway around the world in Vietnam, where a bitter war is being fought by a deceptive, secretive enemy, Helicopters have other opportunities to be good neighbors. Other children are of great concern, and other parents worry, and other hearts ache with fear for loved ones. The United States Marine Corps Civic Action Program in South Vietnam is outstanding. Frequent conferences are held on the always continuing project. Marine Corps Major General Keith Bar McCutcheon presides at a typical civic action meeting. General McCutcheon, commanding general, 1st Marine Aircraft Wing, fully realizes the vital importance of aiding the bereft people of this war-ravaged country. He outlines the roles of his command in civic action. This war here in uh, Vietnam is basically a war to get control of the people. It's a fundamental part of the communist strategy to take over the people and subvert them to their way of life. It's equally part of our strategy to ensure that the communists fail. We go into an area that is friendly, we want to make sure that it stays friendly. We go into an area where the communists have been in control for sometimes as much as 20 years, we immediately set up a program to begin to win those people back over to the friendly Vietnamese side. This is where civic action becomes so important. Once the villagers are convinced that we are willing to stay there to protect them, they then will gradually show more and more support for our programs and those of the government of Vietnam. This is where civic action then really comes into its own. The medical and public health programs, the education programs, the public works, the road building, the reconstruction of public buildings, the digging of wells, the convincing the people of better means of hygiene and cleanliness. The United States Marines are doing their part in civic action, as you've heard. It's good to know that this fine endeavor in Vietnam is being pursued with generous aid and in the name of freedom. Yes, 
there is a second war in South Vietnam, a hard, compulsive combat with mercy and kindness, the weapons. Major General Harry G. Kennard, Commanding General, 1st Cavalry Division, Air Mobile, is deeply interested in this parallel conflict, as is South Vietnam's Premier Ki. The all-out effort to aid the hungry, rescue the homeless, and assist an army of refugees is termed civic action. The two words help express the meaning behind the war you don't hear much about. General Kennard explains. Of course, our primary purpose over here in the 1st Air Cavalry Division, as with all of our United States forces in Vietnam, is to increase the security of this country by driving out the Viet Cong, both the local guerrillas, the main force units, and also the North Vietnamese Army units. But closely associated with this, and in many ways of equal importance, is our civic action program designed to overcome old problems here, problems of hunger, illiteracy, poverty, and disease. In fighting these problem, problems, we use all the methods at our disposal. We use our men who feel great compassion for these people and personally want to help. We use our vehicles. We use our engineer construction materials. We use our trained medical personnel and their supplies. But most importantly, we use our helicopters. As you know, our division is long on helicopters. We have about four times as many as the normal division. And we use all of these in our civic action program. We use them, for example, in moving refugees who elect to leave BC dominated areas and to move to areas which are under the control of the government. For example, we've evacuated something like 6,000 refugees in the period which we have been fighting over here. These are people who were fed up with the VC, who wanted to return to government control, and the only method of safely moving them was by helicopter. We've actually moved over 120 people in one of our Chinook helicopters, together with their bicycles, their pigs, their chickens, and all of their personal belongings, and moved them out of the area of VC domination. This is one facet of civic action in Vietnam. The 1st Cavalry Division and General Kennard have both done a fine job. Civic action programs by our military in Vietnam are widespread. The homeless seem without number. Hunger is everywhere. Someone must help. Marines and soldiers have pitched in with compassion and zeal. The CH-46, in service with the United States Marines in the field, is often used in the Marine Corps Civic Action Program. The Sea Knight supports numerous missions of mercy. This ship is loaded with bags of food earmarked for the refugee village of Tom Ku in South Vietnam's Da Nang province. Wherever our rescue and relief helicopters touch down, conditions permitting, they're generally greeted by swarms of youngsters. Marines and soldiers usually carry candy, and the kids know it. The precious cargo of food is offloaded by eager hands. The Sea Knight's coming means survival for the refugees who fled from the Viet Cong menace, leaving everything behind. There are many of these pitiful settlements throughout the battle areas in Vietnam. Civic action programs, often utilizing the helicopter's adaptability, make life possible until the slower processes of resettlement are activated. But wait a minute. Those men carrying a bag of rice, they're stealing it. The trio is from another adjacent village packed with refugees. The rice was recovered, and the villagers told that their share of food would be along in a few hours, again delivered on schedule by a CH-46 C-9. Were it not for countless unsung civic actions such as this by our Marines and soldiers in Vietnam, the harsh realities of existence without hope would become utterly tragic. Starvation would claim many innocent lives. Famine would spread. Civilian chaos would hamper military operations. A tough war would be that much harder to fight. Civic action helping sufferers in this backwash of conflict spells unmistakably the essence of freedom and democracy. Finally, many of these activities are carried out by Marines and soldiers in their own off-duty hours. Where feasible, Sea Knights and Chinooks are assigned to expedite vital lifts of food 
medicine, and personnel dedicated to easing the sad fate of thousands of war victims. Boeing built helicopters have contributed a considerable portion to civic action programs in Vietnam. There they are indeed, in the eyes of the victims of a cruel war, hovering angels, as they are as well in other parts of the world when disaster strikes.